Imagine a life of constant hunger from the day you're born until the day you die. As soon as you're able to walk, you work in the desolate fields under the hot sun from morning until night. If you're a girl, you're married off as soon as you're viable. And if you're a boy, you're taking on deadly raids of neighboring clans. At any moment, another demonic or desperate tribe can come and attack you. They'll kill your kids, rape your women, and steal your food. To wash away the pain, you go down to the nearest watering hole, where you bathe in dirty water. You're bitten by a mosquito and contract malaria. There's no healthcare, there's no education, there's no future. Your history is forgotten as soon as the elders die, and your children are destined to live the same existence, the miserable life that you did yourself. Well, today we're going to go meet some people who choose that life over modernity. Welcome to bandit country, Karamoja, Uganda. Right, and with me man, Frenzy, and we've come down to the cattle market because we're going to buy ourselves a goat. Um, tensions are quite high in this region, a couple of people were killed over the weekend and it has an infamous reputation for killers and cattle raiders. But we're hoping to go meet a clan in the village today and to ingratiate ourselves into the community we're going to take a goat with us and I've got some other gifts in the back. Part of my Boronizing mission in Africa, I brought a football with me and a couple other local traditional cultural gifts. So. First of all, we need to find a goat in this madness. So let's do it. Just help me decide what's a look, healthy looking goat, because I've got no idea. <laughs> Which what? Uh, probably a goat is best. What do you reckon? I can't see any sheep. Where's the sheep? Which one's a sheep? Which one's a goat? <laughs> Which is the difference? So these are sheep, yeah? Okay, which one's a goat then? <laughs> How can you tell the difference? <laughs> Alright, okay. Which looks healthy? Any of these looking healthy? I'm missing the difference. Which, how would you tell the difference? The horns? No. no? Oh, the hair and the skin, yeah? So which is a healthy looking one? Yeah, we keep moving around, come on. So we're going to keep looking around. This is how out of touch with nature I am. I can't tell the difference between a sheep and a goat. This is a goat. Ah, here we go. He's doing his checks. He doesn't want to have it, this one. Healthy. Looking good, yeah? Is that the one we should get? Alright then, I'll take your word for it. Who's the man with the money? Which man? Yeah? So you? There we are. So this is now ours, yeah? The ginger one. Go, we agreed on one twenty, and then you said five more at the end. Come on, man, be fair. Yeah, we agreed on that. You can't get the deal and then take it back. <laughs> yeah, but we said one twenty, and we paid. Now you're asking for five more. Yeah, we're taking this one. This one. Come on, what's, what's the score here? What, five more? Five. To so make it 125. There's a ten. You got five, five balance. Right, okay. So the deal's done, yeah? Right, you drive a hard bargain, sir. <laughs> James Bush, thank you. <laughs> Right, mission success, we have one. We were 5,000 shillings over budget, but we'll let them have it. Come on, what are we calling him? Nakuprat. Nakuprat? Yeah. I can't even say it. Nakuprat is the name of our, sh our goat, not yeah. sheep, yeah? Yeah. Nakuprat, so is that ginger, like redhead? Okay. We got ourselves a ginger nut, knuckle brats. <laughs> now we've got to get this on the motorbike and drive for an hour to the village. The village of cattle raiders. Let's go. Go on then, you show me how to do it. Like that, yeah? Right, okay. Right, here we go. 
Like this, yeah? yeah. <laughs> oh, shut it. Right, here we go. <laughs> okay, on its ass. Oh, bloody lovely. Hopefully, it doesn't have a poo on the way. But me, Knuckle Fritz, and Frenzy, we're on our way to the Cattle Raiders. Oh, here we go. So this area that we're in is called Cotido and it has a reputation for being the most dangerous place in all of Karamoja. It's not uncommon to see military patrols walking up and down these roads carrying heavy machine guns and rocket pro grenades. There's also plenty of police checkpoints along the way. Thankfully for now, it seems pretty quiet. But look at this. It's an absolutely beautiful part of the world. Mountains in the distance. Cornfields, beautiful. These roads are a bit deadly though. Sometimes when the figures come in our hunger. Yeah. It is uh, their wives of those soldiers who do force them to go for it. Like that they come with something. Mata. Wow, right, we've arrived. How are you doing, How are you? Mm. What's your name? I'm Joshua. My name is Calvin. Calvin, nice to meet you, Calvin. Yeah. Uh, right, we're here. We've arrived in the village. Now, these crops here, mm. are they too dry? Yes. Yeah, they're too dry. Mm. So there's no food coming from them. It seems to be the way everywhere I've driven in this region. All the crops are like that. Are people concerned that there's going to be a famine here anytime soon? Yeah, yes. I've heard people worried about it. Mm, they're worried. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, as you can see, the plants are not working well. You may think uh, that uh, this year is, is, is worse. But yet, the other year, last year, had a severe famine and yet this year is again worse than last year mm -hmm. so we are wondering how the next month will be in the lives of people so when the famines occur mm -hmm. is there a, like an estimated number that how many people would usually die in them in that situation or is it different every time it happens like sometimes like last year we witnessed from some villages about two villages here in each village more than 10 people died of animal hunger. How are you, sir? Good job. Good job. Nice hat. Hey! <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, Joe. Oh. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi. Hey, Joe. I love the hat. It's very good. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? All right. Right, we're all sat round whilst we wait for the elders and the other lads to come over from the neighbouring bit of village. And we're going to sit, have a talk. Should be interesting. We've got warriors, we've got reformed people, and we've got some of the elders here to hear all the different perspectives. First of all, I'm Joshua, so I'm just going to say it to everyone rather than repeat myself to everyone. And then just go round and shake each of his hand to get their names, yeah? Happy flat, okay. I'm after your name, my boss. Aaron <laughs> Lopia. Nice to meet you. Lourit. Lourit. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm murdering the names, I'm terrible at languages. Moring. Nice to meet you, Moring. Upelit. Nice to meet you. I thought I got that one good. Bagra. Abakra. Mm. Nice to meet you. Audio. Audio. Eh. Audio or audio? <laughs> that, that one lost me. Amea. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Amea. 
Kenya. Kenya. Now you look like a real warrior, covered in scars. Akuya chala. Akuya chala. Hey. Good. That was strong, powerful. I like that. Come on. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. And the man with the fancy hat. Kuruka Paul. Rakau Pau. Kuruka Paul. Kuruka Pau. That was that was very difficult. I like it though. It made me work. Kelon Peter. Kelon Peter. Ah, similar names. And then the chairman, the boss. Fe. Lakoto Mateo. Lakoto Mateo. Lakoto Mateo. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Mata. Mata. Mata ng piyok. Mata ng kapul ng lupa ta alok utiro. Hindi alak kampara. No way, dia aku tu no way. Eh, dona bo, emu mereka juga ingin dengan aku kerong, ingin tarawa api kerong, topan kita ada juga kerong air. Hotel yang itu emu murni tu, mana airian, aku jogging. Allah karang itu yang kita jauh. I've heard stories and I can see the crops are dry. And the first question I really wanted to ask was, how is life in the village at the present moment in this community? How is life for people? Allah kawal aku ingin dengan aku no way. Ni pernah ni ada ni ada orang tu ni corona je ni kolong kanyarem. Ini ni orang yang punya kolong kelimu ni kanyarem mungkin. Aku aku ni yang orang yang dia punya dua cut napa dua aku ni orang ni ada nak ketua tenyo. Tapi yang ni lagi ni mesti dua ni corona ni tayo na. Abelar ni tu ngah, pangu ni dia ni tu ngah ni. Ni corona reka garajuna. Mama itu nak koru, tu mungkin itu ayam na doa. Aku ngarang ni tu kuni ana ijar tau. Ijar itu cendol ya, ijar kerja doa. Kalau kami cendol ijar ni, ni boleh ni boleh kuni dekiri ijar ni. Ijar ni ijar kan faham dengan tarian ni je. Kalau mana bukan ayam ni ketong kudo, ni rukang ngarang itu tu ngaji. Ni ketok. Mulu anget tu, la la ni dek ya ni nui, ya cie kiyaran na awo, eria mun eria mun beri ngetung ani yang ecan, nang dek itu, aku rujuk nanti yo, ayo ngopi ya, bagi betul tanya kita dengan kerajaan lugu, eria mun ni ecamun ni agak dek, ecamun ni aku jual agak dek, nak korang nak pi, temu guna tomber dek, mana mana. When they're actually taking part in the raids, do they enjoy it? And what sense of, I imagine because they rely on each other. What sense of brotherhood do they have when they're doing the raids? None of them enjoys. But sometimes it's the conditions that force them to go. But now, so far, they don't even like, they don't want even to hear about raids. Okay. If the children grew up and they wanted to leave, would there be resistance from the elders? Or would they be happy for the children to go and move to the city and try and provide and send money back to the village? The parents or the elders are not refusing or denying these children from going to towns. Mm -hmm. But what's denying them going to towns is illiteracy. Since they are not land, they believe that towns are for the people who are land. Mm -hmm. If all these guys were to be educated, probably all of them would be in the village, I mean in, the, in town, <coughs> working in town. But now, because they are not educated, they cannot access towns. They cannot manage to, to, to stay in town. They don't know town life. They are now used to village life, mainly because of illiteracy. Maybe those ones who are in school now, next time can be in town. Then they help these ones. Yeah. Cool. So it's seen almost as an inevitable move towards town once the education comes to this part of the country. That's what it sounds like.
Okay, so we've ended the meeting and now we're going to go walk around the little settlement that we're in. You can see there's one section of it over here, another section over here. There's one a bit further in the distance over there where the kids are playing. And then there's even more down there. So this is all one clan, yeah? Mm. All one clan. Are they all blood related? Yeah. All blood related. There's a lot of people here. Big family. As the chairman, what are his responsibilities to the community? I'm <laughs> 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 You have to stay nimble, <laughs> even to get in and out of the house. See, these are the granaries for food, the, the storage facilities. And the MD. But because there is no harvest, that's why you can see the storage facilities just here like this. Okay. There is nothing to store here. You can see kitchens for quite long that have not put fire on the fire here yeah. because there's nothing to do. <laughs> so, what will people be eating today? Hmm? What will people eat today? The wild fruits. The wild fruits. Mm. Uh, those pumpkins. So these leaves, people be eating. This bit, yeah. And this. Mm. Mm. They pick it, they chop it, and then they. Yeah. Oh shit. Mm. And that is how they survive. Oh, you're like young out to me. Oh, you're young out to me. And that is where the, the, this is the crab. Usually, where the the the. But they keep the cows. They, yeah, where they keep the cows. But now, because of raids, you can imagine where cows have been stopped in. The things have germinated, in. so it means there is no cow that has ever stopped here. Okay, so it's been a long time since there's a cow been in here because there's no dung anywhere. Holy shit. And also, uh, as you look things on, uh, fixed on, uh, on top of uh, on the top of the wood. <laughs> Those are some of the things they feed on. Those are the edibles. They put there, they dry, and then they cook it. Okay, so this is food as well at the top here. <laughs> Whatever this is. Fucking hell, this is a tough life. This is a cucumbers, the seeds have been removed. Mm -hmm. This is residue. Those brewers. Here, yeah? Brewing. They take the residue. This is the sorghum. They dry it, yeah. They dry it and then they, they use it as 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 for for mixing with it. water for pocho. Okay. Yes. So you can see this thing has no food value in it. Yeah. Of course we understand residue. It has got no food value. Every food value has been filtrated out. So and people that, just what they just do it. Yeah, to, to have something in there. Facilitate. Oh, it's another oh, evidence of him. We saw the other leaves that uh, they, they were feeding on. Mm -hmm. These leaves have already dried. So it means there is nothing like feeding on these leaves because they have dried. So even the leaves it will no longer again gone. sprout because it has dried all the way from where it uh, germinated from. So that's why uh, the origin has already dried. When it comes to prioritizing the food, so when there is food, who are the first to eat? 
Is it the children? Is it the men? Is it the women? Or is it first come, first serve? How does the food get distributed? Who's the first people that are fed? There are two groups of people that are the first to eat. One is the small children, and then the vulnerable old women and men. There are those old women and men who cannot come out of the house. They just decay there and they clean the place. They just urinate there. They just stay there for the rest of their lives. So they, we, they even have a doubt if they can come out. Mm -hmm. So those are the first priorities, the first groups of people. Okay. And what do we have here? Is this beans of some sort? Sim Sim. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Calvin was just telling me there that although those doors are used, they're so small for protection to help stop people getting in. When the people are, are desperately hungry, they struggle to even get down and get under and get in and out of their own places. And actually, the houses, the doors to the houses have similar sized doors. So if you're too hungry, you can't even get out of your house. Fucking madness how people are living. So this is the main crop? That, this is the, the crop that has worked well. So is this spoiled, did you say? All this. Because you're angry, you pick the one with a few seeds like this. Right? See if you can pick something to grind. And this is what they're eating right now. There is a homestead somewhere by there. The houses have been left there because uh, the owners died of anger and so the, the ones that remained are just in the bush looking forward to it. The village is just behind there. It really brings the problems at home in England into a perspective when you're seeing the kids eating dried leaves, the kitchens essentially completely out of use because there's just no food even the reserved bits of leaves are too dry because of the, the sun and hard to take in to be honest so how long ago did the people that lived here die then? It's about five months. Five months. So this is the homes of people that have died. You can see where the food stores are not only just empty, they've been sat here empty so long that leaves have started to grow into them. And same here. The houses lay empty. In the bush, recapturing it. When I was planning this video, I was thinking, come here, bring the goat, we'll all have a feast. I figured these people would eat at least once a day. But this is even more extreme hunger than the other places I've been to. And uh, okay. the other greens that we saw, the other mama eating is that one. Okay, so this is like a similar to a pumpkin, is it? Yeah. Watermelon. Okay. What is watermelon? A watermelon. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and they will re replant the seeds. They plant the seeds. Okay. Hello, right, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. hmm. When when people die, is there a service? Do people? have a celebration or does, how does that work? For you to have a celebration, of course, you must have something to facilitate to the gathering. And so, because you can't have something to facilitate people, you, you, you can't celebrate. 
So you just bury your person and keep quiet. At that very moment. And sometimes the, 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 the person who loses the, the maybe the, the neighbor, the relative, or maybe perhaps a friend, you, you, you cannot have time to, to bury. Sometimes you are too vulnerable that you cannot even bury the dead. Until the maybe the church comes in to bury even as the church. As the VHT, she has always been sick and we have tried to talk to the health personnel if they can provide some some medicine for her. But she has no good and any treatment. She, she just sits here. And suffers. And moreover, in that sickness, this is the water she drinks. So imagine you're not well and you need looking after, you need some health care and there's none. And you try to quench it first, and then this is the water that you have to drink. The kids got a bowl. Do you want me to pass the football to the kids? Yeah. Can I see your football? So this is something that you see quite often here. Is there is a love for the game, but obviously people can't really afford to buy the ball, so what they use is old bits of cloth, bits of string, and basically rubbish bins. And look, and they make their own football. But do you want a new ball? Do you want this one? Yeah? But there's one condition, yeah? You have to say that you're going to be Middlesbrough fans for the rest of your lives, so you have to shout, up the borough! Yeah? So once you shout up the borough, you can get the ball. You ready? So I say three, two, one. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side. Yeah? I'm going to go to the So up the borough. Hey! Up the borough. Hey! Up the borough. Hey! Yeah, there we go. We want to say, go on. Go on, go on. Go on. So we've got some. Hey, it's for sharing. It's for yours to play with. Then you were a set of Bora fans in Uganda. So we've come to another one of the, the gardens. It's the homestead I told you about. Uh, the owners have, have gone to look for what to eat, the bush. Okay, how long have they been gone for? They've been gone for three years. Looking. That's why you can see nobody has ever settled here. Yeah, it's really overgrown, okay? Get a little bit closer. So these people went for food three and a half years ago and they never returned. So. Maybe they're dead. Maybe they found food. Maybe they found somewhere new to live. It's unlikely that these guys will ever, ever know what happened to them. But this is what they left. As men, how do they deal with seeing their family and their loved ones suffer? How do they mentally cope with that? As a man, when when Buddha strikes the family, when you see things that worsen, the immediate thing that comes to your mind is how they come up with a, a, a mentality of going for raids, because that is the immediate resort. And that is the, the, the way they think is the simplest way to earn a living. Mm -hmm. So when anger strikes the family and you see the wife is stricken, their children are stricken, and things are not working well, you immediately develop the idea to go for it. Okay. Okay. 
So the chairman just told us that this is the end of the places where the families live and now we're going to walk through the bush to where these people find their water and get their water from. Sometimes it's very difficult to frame a question coming from the background that I am from especially when at the, ma at the moment in the West we concentrate so much on emotions and feelings and mental stress when you have physical stress here and you're trying to ask questions about how people deal with things mentally it doesn't even register they're like oh, we're just coming up with solutions of how to solve the problem rather than sitting and crying about it or sharing their issues with the people next to them they're just literally how do we deal with this problem? We need to get it solved. Some would say a traditionally masculine approach to situation solving. So this is the one watering point for the whole settlement. And they were saying this is the same place that the animals use. So obviously they're pissing it, they're shitting it, and then the people come along and they're drinking in it, they're washing in it, and this is the only resource that they have, so they have no other option. It truly is a shame about the suffering here because it's an incredibly beautiful part of the world. On mountains in the background, this watering hole. This is like the picturesque scene that you see of a holiday on safari, but really the reality of that is the hardships of people's lives. So, Thank now you. before we can adjourn, is welcoming the elders to, to bless us traditionally, the way we pray traditionally to God. Perfect. So, <laughs> Very nice. Right, so I'm going to finish the video there. And I'm not really sure how I was expecting today to turn out, but it's probably gone a little bit differently to how I had imagined. When I come to Uganda, people told me in the Karamoja, the cattle raiders were the most fierce, bloodlusting savages. They like to raid and kill and steal people's property for fun. And in actual fact, I've just gone there and these people, they're desperate, they're hungry, and they're looking for solutions to that. So they're driven to cattle raiding. You can see they were battered and scarred, bruised. And the desperation is what's led them into the cattle raiding, at least in this generation. And they want it to stop, they want peace. It just goes to show that what you hear from the outside and what you read online is never really what's actually going on on the ground. Um, I also just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's subscribed, hit 10K finally. It's been a long time coming. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to be in the next one, but until then, toodles.